Many biowolf users have the need to run what are called pipelines. And a pipeline is a series of commands where command 1 might create some output and that serves as, as the input for command 2. So you could put all these commands into a script and then the script would work through command 1, create the output, then run command 2 and so on. But you might have the situation where each of these commands requires different resources. So command 1 might be suitable for running a swarm of jobs, that is a large number of independent jobs that are similar, and they would create some output. Command 2 might be a single job that collects all that output and runs a single job that requires a large amount of memory. So there's a better way of submitting such a pipeline, and that's called using job dependencies. With job dependencies, you would put each of these commands into a separate job, and then you submit them such that the second job runs only after the first job completes. The Slurm batch system on Biowolf has job dependencies built in, and they're very easy to use. So here's an example where you want job 2 to run after job 1 completes. You submit the first job with sbatch job1.bat and you get one job ID. Then you submit the second job with sbatch dash dash depend equals after any and the job ID of the first job and then the second batch script. You can use the sjobs command to show you the status of the jobs. And what you'll see is that the second job shows up in PD state, that's pending. And the reason is dependency. And under the dependency column, it tells you what job or jobs it's dependent on. In the previous example, we used the dash dash depend flag. And dash dash depend has several options. There's after any, which is what we used in the last example. And that means after the specified job or jobs have completed. There's after OK, which means after the specified jobs have completed successfully, as far as the batch system knows. After not OK, which means after the specified jobs have failed, according to the batch system. Or after, which means after the specified jobs have started. How does the batch system determine whether a job was successful or failed? The exit status of a job is the exit status of the last command in the batch script. So for example, in this batch script, if you have a series of commands, commands 1, command 2, command 3, then the exit status of this job will be the exit status of command 3. If command 3 was successful, the job would be marked as completed successfully, even if command 1, 2, and all the previous commands failed. You can use the set-e command in your batch script. And set-e causes the batch script to exit after the first failed command. So if the command 2 failed, then the batch script would exit immediately, and the job would be marked as failing. You can make several batch jobs dependent on a single job. So for example, you want job 1 to run, and after it completes, you want job 2, 3, and 4 to all run independently, possibly simultaneously. So you submit job 1, and you note down its job ID. And then you submit job 2 with the same as batch depend after any and job 1's job ID. Likewise, you can submit job 3 with the same dependency as the previous one. And you can also make one job dependent on several other jobs. So in this case, you want job 1, job 2, and job 3 to run independent of each other. And after all three have completed, you want job 5 to run. So you submit job 5 with this command, sbatch dash dash depend equals after any colon and the job IDs of all the previous jobs that you want it to be dependent on, separated, separated by colons. If job 5 happens to be a swarm, you could, have it, you could submit it with swarm dash f and the name of the swarm command file, dash dash depend equals after any, and all the dependent jobs separated by colons. 
Of course, you can see that this is going to get pretty tedious to note down job IDs and make sure you type in the right ID for the next dependent job. And so it's probably something you'll want to script. We have a web page, hpc.nih.gov slash docs slash job underscore dependencies dot html. And that has examples of scripting job dependencies in Bash, Perl, and Python. So let's end this tutorial by working our way through a set of job dependencies. We're going to use the, the same data that we downloaded for the class earlier. So let me cd to that directory. And you see that all it contains is a set of batch scripts that you can use to as examples for testing job dependencies. So I'm going to submit the first one with sbatch. I get a job ID. And then I submit the second jo job with sbatch dash dash depend equals after any and this job ID. And you see I get a second job ID. If I now type S jobs, this is what I see. Uh, unfortunately, the output of S jobs is rather wide and so it's got wrapped around. But basically, what you see is the first job is in run state, the second job is in PD, that means pending, and the reason is dependency. And you see the jobs that it's dependent on, which is that first job. So, likewise, you could submit a swarm of jobs. You could say swarm dash f and use this command file dash dash depend equals after any colon any of these jobs so let's use the second job and you get a swarm job id if i now run s jobs you see the three jobs that i had um, the third one is a swarm of jobs and it's also queued because of a dependency and you see the job ID that it's dependent on. So that's all there is to job dependencies. As I said, we have a web page which contains examples of scripting job dependencies and you can get to it by going to hpc.nih.gov and search for dependency. And that brings you to the page called Building Pipelines Using Slurm Dependencies, which contains examples for Bash, Perl, and Python. Thank you.